recording, recording. Welcome to Hancock, New York. And the start of the Northeast BDR. I am going to end up calling it the New England BDR probably the entire time. So just deal with it. <laughs> I apologize, but honestly, whatever. Got tire pressures down, got ABS off. I have no idea what this first section is going to be like other than it's 133 miles to the next town, to the end of the section. I got 100 miles to a campground, 39 miles to gas, which I just got gas, so I'm not worried about that. This is the only BDR now that I have not done any section of. Didn't lower my tire pressures at all on the Mid-Atlantic BDR because I really didn't need to. I mean, hell, I until I was in Pennsylvania, I really didn't even need to turn my ABS off. And we're gonna intersect with the route right here. And we are on the BDR officially. Woohoo! The Northeast BDR. Oh, I love these bridges. I know that there are covered bridges on the Northeast BDR. There, I didn't see any on Mid-Atlantic. I thought there were, but there weren't. So, I don't know, but we are crossing back into Pennsylvania briefly. The Northeast BDR is said to be the most difficult, especially if you do the uh, expert sections. But several of the expert sections I will not be doing because they require an OHV permit. And it was like 115 bucks for what was basically like seven or eight miles of off-road. And I'm by myself still, so I don't really anticipate doing the expert sections because I'm not trying to kill myself. <laughs> straight into the dirt. Sweet. Alright. That's nice. First section of dirt. It's like two miles, like not even a mile in. I do have the drone accessible. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fly it today. It, it, like, there's like a 70% chance of rain. I did get drizzled on a little bit coming in. The high is basically 70, which is what it is right now, which is why I have the lines of jacket on. Because the I may take the sleeves off later if it gets too warm. And I did go back to the Hero 8 on the helmet cam. So helmet cam is now a Hero 8. I was just having a lot of problems with the Hero 9 with the media mod. It kept it wouldn't turn off, so it would constantly turn on and run the battery down, even if I didn't have the camera on. And it was inconsistently cutting out my lav mic. And so, like, all of the last day on the Mid-Atlantic BDR, I had no helmet audio. And I had no idea. So that's just going to be a long cinematic video, basically, because I have, you know, I may end up doing a voiceover for it just because I have no audio from that day. While the 8 has some quirks and, you know, does things weird sometimes, I know what those quirks are and it's consistent. And so I can work with it. Tis another beautiful day on the BDR. Tomorrow's supposed to be a little bit warmer and a lower chance of rain. I think the high is like 76 or something like that. Now let's see, I'll ride today and tomorrow. And then I will get to where I divert off of basically section three and go down to, I think it's Bethel, Connecticut, which is where Hamlin Motorsports is. And I'm probably gonna take a full day there, edit footage. I got a bunch on the Dakota 600 done, so it'd be good to get more of that taken care of. And then continue on with fresh rubber. See how muddy this gets. Just ducking trees. My understanding of the challenges on the Northeast BDR are mostly uh, rock gardens, baby heads. It sounds like most of them are like embedded though, so. 
that just makes it rocky. You know, it's kind of like Arizona and stuff. All right, we're gonna go, I guess, right here. Um, Tim and Marissa did a bunch of sections of this. Though when they did it, it was like nearly full fall. And so they were having issues with uh, leaves. Which would definitely not make this easier. A little slippery in there because of the rocks. Yep, this is going to be more work than Mid-Atlantic for sure. Glad I lowered the tire pressures. I don't have the greatest traction right now, so that's anything that will help. <laughs> and I may run into a couple of people. It sounds like there's a couple of different groups that either started in the last couple of days or are starting soon. That's a Widowmaker. And my biggest challenge is probably today and maybe the next couple of days are gonna be how muddy is this? because there has been quite a lot of rain. VDR and the Mid-Atlantic VDR are very similar in that they're both very twisty. Lots of turns, lots of road intersections. You gotta have a good GPS that can get you through this stuff because otherwise you will get lost. It is fun now. Big potholes. Let's go over here. When I get up into Maine and Vermont, there's some class four trail or class four roads, I guess is what they refer to them as, but it's basically a completely unmaintained road. I don't remember if those are only expert sections or what the deal is with that, but we'll see when I get there. just shows when you get into some of the areas where the population density is just a little lower. It's way easier to find dirt roads. It's one of the reasons why it's so hard to do any kind of off-roading or green laning in Europe and UK because there just isn't much. You know, people have lived there for so long and there's so many people now that your options are pretty limited best described as greasy. It's not really muddy, it's not even particularly slippery, but you notice the bike move a little bit differently than it does normally, and you slide just a little bit more, especially if you start getting on the brakes or anything like that. It's like, oh yeah, I don't have quite as much traction as I feel like I should.
así Excuse me, squirrel. Buddy, get off the trail. Thank you. Let's see, it's what? 10.30? Yeah, the fuel place I might stop and get lunch. It'll probably be an early lunch, but that won't be a bad thing necessarily. So apparently, oh god, a couple of the bridges are out. Oh, I will step sideways there. Going sleeveless did warm up quite a bit. Feels pretty nice. That says 82. There's no way. It's definitely still in the 70s. That was an excellent lunch. So that gas station has a cafe attached to it. 
I was like, yeah, I'll just have a burger. It was a gigantic burger. It was probably a half pounder. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have a food coma after this. Crap. Well, that's cool. Train, yeah, train bridge. <sighs> I wanna say I'm back in New York. I, I have to be. Yeah, because I, I crossed it. I crossed that bridge. Alright, New York is quite pretty. super difficult. I mean, there's little technical bits, but it's a lot of fun. Chase me. I'm being nice. No. Yeah, these trees are changing. I'm probably going to be a little early for the full colors, but I'm going to get some of it. Bear 
Spring Mountain. Eventually... have like two ruts but those are both of your lines I had a lot of water down it recently so is this Yeah, that went from super chill to not, like instantly. That has clearly had a hell of a lot of water down it pretty recently. Oops. This is slick. Glad I didn't put the 360 up because I would be ducking and diving branches. This dry would probably be a hell of a lot of fun. Because you could kind of play around. But wet, it's just soft. little section what was crazy was there was just no warning you're 
riding along and all of a sudden you just drive into that. It's like, oh, okay, here we go. Super pretty back here. Rock walls. Remember Tim and Marissa talking about those. There's all these little rock walls as old property lines and source of stuff like this. Hi turkeys. Get out of the road. Jesus Christ. You ran right, and then you turned around and flew left. That's smart. Oh, God, turkeys are stupid. Skunk High Road, something like that. Close to being done. I have okay side grip though. Because the knobs are still pretty much there on the sides. It's dead center where I'm starting to run out of grip. stick up and hit my foot. Yeah, lots of baby heads. Just gotta block. Stay on it. look up what the anti-rent war is because I keep seeing signs for it from events that have happened. I don't know what they are. 